Valley. So here we are. It's still March and we are working on self-control and our story today is called Of Course It's a Big Deal and it's written by Brian Smith. The um, character in the book is Braden, the same character we had last week from our book called um, What Were You Thinking? So listen up. Braden's going to teach us another skill when it comes to self-control. Hey everyone, Braden here and boy do I have a story to tell you. You see, my parents just don't get it. They must have forgotten what it's like to be a kid. But it doesn't matter because there's no way when they were kids that they had to deal with anything like what I have to deal with. I mean, they seriously act like the stuff that bugs me isn't a big deal. But if they know what, it, as if they know what is or is not a big deal, they can't. They're parents. They haven't been kids in like 100 years, like since the Pilgrims. Anyway, here's the thing I was doing great, behaving myself at school. So my parents decided to take my little brother and me to the fun zone. The place has bumper cars, putt-putt golf, video games, and lots of other cool stuff. And I couldn't wait to drive a go-kart for the first time. When we got there, I ran straight to the go-kart track. As soon as the guy who worked there opened the gate to let us in, I immediately ran to the yellow go-kart. Then I heard, oh, whoa, there. I turned around and the worker said, hmm, who's going to drive for you? Um, no one, I told him. And that's when it happened. The worst words I could ever imagine came out of his mouth. I'm sorry, but you aren't tall enough to drive yourself. I stood there. Stunned. I mean, seriously, he had to be joking, right? Obviously, he had never seen me play my race car video game at home. I ran to mom to tell her about this because I just knew she would let me drive myself. Boy, was I wrong. Sorry, Brayden, a rule's a rule and we need to follow the rules, declared mom. I was shocked. Her words came at me like they were said in slow motion, so I shouted, Well, that's a dumb rule, and I think you and this guy just hate kids. Kid, it's not the, that big of a deal. You can ride with someone else, said the worker dude. It is a big deal. I hate this place. I just want to get out of here. Then I ran off and sat on a sticky wooden bench. Dad stayed in the go-kart line and rode with my brother Blake. Mom had quietly followed me and then sat down next to me. When Dad and Blake finished, they went to play putt-putt. I looked at Mom and said, I thought we were going home. No, your trip here is ruined only if you let it be that way. I think you might be overreacting a little, don't you think? Of course not, I said. You just don't get it. You don't know what it's like to be a kid. <laughs> Smiling, Mom said, you know, it's been a while since I was a kid, but I used to have a hard time staying calm when things didn't go my way, too. That is until your grandpa sat me down and told me about his plan on how to do it. Here's the thing. I love my grandpa. He's the coolest old guy on the planet, and he gets it. He really gets it. So even though I didn't want to hear anything but the words... Sorry, Braden. It was all a mistake. Go ahead and drive the go-kart. I was a little bit interested in hearing what Grandpa had said. I sighed and quietly asked, so what's his plan? Grandpa showed me four easy steps to staying calm. You just have to be willing to stop what you're doing and try them out, explained Mom. Four steps to reacting calmly. The steps Grandpa taught me are, number one, calm down. You can take deep breaths or count to 10. Think of a way to make the situation better. Try it out. If nothing works, or if you can't figure out what to do, get help. I'm not happy you shouted out those things at the track and ran away, but I'm proud that you eventually found a quiet spot and settled down. What did you do to help calm yourself down? I have no idea. Mom replied, could you have just walked away without shouting? Maybe, but it's hard, I said. You're right, but it's the right thing to do. 
Mom told me she likes to take deep breaths and count to 10 to calm down, while Grandpa likes to close his eyes and think of a happy place. When it comes to the second step, she said, I needed to think about ways I could have handled the situation better. I know I said, I could sit on top of your shoulders to make me tall enough to drive the go-kart. Hmm, do you really think that's going to work? Probably not. Well, I suppose I could just not ride the go-karts until I'm tall enough. Sure, but don't you think it would still be fun to ride along with someone who is tall enough? Hmm, maybe, I said. You could ride with Dad or me. I took a deep breath and thought for a minute. Maybe that wouldn't be too awful. At least I'd get to ride, right? Can I take a ride with each of you? Sure, but that can only happen if you stay calm and try your new way of making the situation better and just think, now you get to ride twice. Actually, that sounded really great. We went and found Dad and Blake and we all rode the go-karts twice. The rest of the day was a blast. Okay, so maybe I did overreact a little bit. After we got home that night, I was super excited to watch baseball with Dad. Sometimes we wear our jerseys and pretend we're really at the game. I asked Dad if he wanted me to grab his jersey. Mom overheard me and said it was too late to watch the game. I had to get ready for bed. What? I wasn't even asking you, I said. Hey, that's no way to talk to your mother, Dad snapped. Looks like you won't be watching the game tonight. You need to head straight to your room. Can't I at least watch one inning with you? The only thing you can watch is the way you talk to your mom. As I walked to my room, Dad turned on the baseball game and I mumbled to myself, that's not fair. In my room, I took a few deep breaths to calm down and thought of a plan to make the situation better. Then it came to me. If I can't watch it, neither can Dad. I ran straight downstairs and threw a blanket over the TV. Hmm. When I saw the look on Dad's face, I quickly knew it was a bad, bad plan. He marched me right back to my room, and I lost TV privileges for a whole week. Later, Dad came back to my room and said he was disappointed by what I said, or what I did. Brayden, overreacting does not help you or anyone out. We need to come up with a plan. I told Dad about the steps Mom talked to me about. I told him that when I was sent to bed, I calmed myself by taking deep breaths and then came up with the idea to make the situation better. My blanket over the TV plan. Did it really make anything better? Dad asked. It seems to me you made the situation worse. Yeah, I guess you're right, I confessed. Now, what else could you have done to make the situation better? Should have just gone to bed and not done anything. <clears throat> Maybe, but I think that would have made the situation worse for you. It didn't have to be such a big deal, did it? What if you had suggested we watch the game tomorrow night? Dad, I'm pretty sure the players would stop the game wouldn't stop the game for us. Haha, <laughs> that's not what I meant, he chuckled. But I could record it. Hey, that's a great idea. Why can't I think of things like that? You can. It just takes practice. The key to remain calm is to remain calm so you can think of good ways to make a decision better. So calm, feeling okay, and then getting upset, turning it into a big deal. A few days later, we celebrated Mom's birthday at a restaurant. For dessert, we ordered a huge ice cream sundae with candles on it. The whole time, my brother and I stared at that sundae like two hungry vultures. Mom must have noticed because she slid the sundae over to us and said we could share it. As I grabbed my spoon, my nasty brother licked the top of the sundae. Ugh, I wanted to smash that sundae in his face. But then I realized I had to show my parents that I wouldn't overreact. I closed my eyes like Grandpa said and thought of a happy place. I pretended I was swimming in a pool of ice cream. When I opened my eyes, I wasn't so mad anymore, and I had a solution. Dad, can I please have my own Sunday? Sorry, no, we don't have time to get another one. But Blake licked the top of the whole thing. That's gross. Felt myself getting angry again, so I tried my best to stay calm, taking a deep breath. If I shouted, whined, or did something I shouldn't, I'd get punished again. 
I'll just ask Dad about this later. In the car, I kept quiet. Right before we got home, Dad pulled into the parking lot of our neighborhood grocery store and said, Braden, I need you to come inside with me. Okay, I said, wondering why he couldn't go in by himself. Once in the store, Dad walked straight to the frozen food section. There, he opened up the refrigerator door, grabbed a huge tub of vanilla ice cream, and said, You did a great job of staying calm when things didn't go your way at the restaurant. Think this will work for a Sunday at home? I slapped my face to make sure I wasn't dreaming of a happy place. Oh, yeah! Dad even let me get sprinkles, chocolate syrup, and whipped cream. After we got home, Mom, Dad, and I got to eat our own Sundays, but Blake, because he made a bad choice when he licked, but not Blake, because he made a bad choice when he licked Mom's birthday Sunday. When Dad told my brother he couldn't have a Sunday, Blake stuck out his tongue and knocked the sprinkles to the ground. I turned to my Mom and Dad and said, Sheesh, what an overreactor. That's not a big deal. So when I see you this week coming up, we're going to talk about the difference between what is a big deal and what's just a little deal and how we can stay calm. I look forward to seeing you guys this week. We'll talk soon.